Good morning, everyone. My name is Tracy Nyer, and I'm with the Virginia Small Business Development Center Network. For those of you who are not familiar with our organization, the Virginia SBDC is a partnership program between the U.S. Small Business Administration, George Mason University, and local host institutions throughout Virginia. With 26 locations across the Commonwealth, we provide training and technical assistance to small businesses in their local communities. Our one-on-one -on -one consulting service is available at no charge. Today's webinar, Cooperation, is one of Virginia SBDC's educational offerings and is part of a webinar series that we were just finishing up for retail, retailers and restaurateurs. And if you weren't able to attend the other sessions, you can find the recordings of those on our website, virginiasbdc.org. Before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. We are recording today's presentation. It'll be posted on the Virginia SBDC website. Currently, everybody's microphones are muted, um, but at the end of the presentation, we are opening up this for questions and we're hoping a really good discussion. If you have questions during the presentation, you can type those questions into the Q&A window or raise your hand. And um, like I said, at the end of the session, we'll unmute everyone. Today's presentation begins with an overview by Mark Wilson. Mark brings 35 years of experience to bear helping retail, restaurant, and tourism-related small businesses refine and promote their concepts to the public. In 1975, Mark started his retail career as co-owner of the largest distributor of Earth Shoes in the U.S. Since then, he has held executive positions with retailers such as Bridges of Georgetown, Crown Books, Circuit City, the Bicycle Exchange, eCampers.com and store tracks. Mark joined the SBDC in 2009 as the retail industry consultant as he delivered over 70 webinars, excuse me, seminars and webinars, yeah. <laughs> and has assisted over 300 retailers throughout, the, throughout Virginia. So without further ado, here's Mark. Good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for the early sunrise seminar, but I'm a morning person, so you'll just have to put up with me. Um, the first slide there is our two of our all-stars is Tisha and Diane from Dayton, and they're a wonderful example of how cooperation works. And hopefully, one or both of them will join us uh, today and and tell you a little bit about what's going on in Dayton. Um, the, uh, I actually did not make up the word cooperation, although. Uh, I love it, and it's a combination of competition and cooperation, but uh, we'll see that in the next slide here shortly. But we're in the last uh, one of a series of five. Uh, hopefully, we've shared some good nuggets and pearls of wisdom with you all that you can use and use to uh, improve business and continue to uh, carry on during an unusual uh, shopping season. We're about to, uh, well, hopefully we've entered it already, but um, this holiday season will be different than anything we've experienced in the past. So we'll talk about that a little bit today as well. Um, there are, uh, Amanda, uh, do you wanna tell them a little bit about these two additional webinars that are coming up? Yes. So um, November 5th and November 9th, we have two upcoming webinars for hosting virtual events. And these are primarily um, for producers, uh, wineries, breweries. And then also for the second one will be for restaurants and food and beverage retailers specifically. So if you're interested, if, you're in, if you fall into either of those categories, the webinars there's, you know, the one for wineries and breweries is on November 5th. The one for retailers for food and beverage is on November 9th. Um, so you can go to virginiaspdc.org to sign up for that. Perfect. Next slide. So that's me. You, you'll be you probably know me by now. Next slide. Uh, Coopetition. A rising tide raises all the boats. And we're all in the same boat. So what I'm saying here is that if we work together to improve the overall performance of the town, the individual stores will benefit as well and rise as with the tide. So 
next slide. This is uh, this is why it works and what it is. Coopetition is founded on the concept and philosophy that teams can and should help cooperate with each other, even as they compete. Coopetition involves learning from teammates. Independently owned stores and restaurants are the fabric of our community and critical to our local economy and social structure. So what I mean by that is we count on the small stores and restaurants and hospitality businesses in our towns uh, as a foundation of the community for our area, uh, even our county. So the importance of us helping and working together so that our small businesses can not only survive, but thrive during this unusual shopping period, um, it's important, it's critical. We're part of the whole infrastructure and it's important that we come out of this all together. And the only other note I have on that is practice empathy right now because everybody is slightly freaked out. I mean, look, we've been in this since March. Uh, the reporting that you, you look at says that the customer is slowly evolving. I think I said yesterday in a webinar that when polled back in April, they said the number one concern was safety and how antiseptic the stores will be for the shopping season. When polled again in October, although safety and antiseptic was at the top, at the very top was convenience, meaning we've got to be keep in mind the four A's of service. And those are the customer wants it anytime, any place, any way, and anywhere. So when we think about coopetition and we think about e-commerce and we think about half the business coming from our websites now and not from walk-in traffic, it puts a whole different twist to how we not only coopetition, uh, co but kind of how we go to market during this holiday season. Every report I've read says that walk-in traffic will be down at least 25% and that most consumers are saying they're going to do at least half of their shopping online. So when it comes to, well, the next point, communities that are committed to helping one another so that the entire town can prosper are outperforming towns that don't. The spirit of coopetition far outweighs a less cooperative approach by individual stores. Listen, we've got to not only be cooperative and do things together in the town as we proceed with our bricks and mortar stores, but I'm here to tell you, we've got to figure out ways where we could do things together online and promote together online. So I have some ideas on that and I'd like uh, Hopefully the group that's tuned in will share ideas with their colleagues because that's what this is all about. I'm setting the stage, but I hope that the people that have tuned in are willing to talk today and share with their colleagues ideas, not only ideas that have worked for them and that are great, but maybe you've tried some ideas that haven't worked. And they're just important for us to know as well. And lastly, you know, this is an opportunity for the community, despite the parameters we've been put into here with COVID-19, to give off a vibe of togetherness and community. Um, we, we know that the local movement is alive and well, and we know that Practically every consumer on the planet right now knows how important it is to support their friends, neighbors, relatives, and colleagues that are in business together in their towns. So that's kind of a backdrop on coopetition. Next slide. So what have, what have others done? 
what 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 are some ideas that I've learned through you know the number of years that I've been traveling through towns and talking to business owners and goodness I guess I've been involved with 12 holiday seasons as a consultant for the SBDC one town uh, developed a contest for the holidays um, and I think there was more than one winner so maybe it went over several weeks um, and the person that's from this town may be joining us today and might be able to fill any gaps that I have but the contest was a shot. The winner got a shopping spree, a two day shopping spree in the town with $500 worth of town bucks, which were uh, offered by the town office and the, the um, town, town uh, administrators had some CARES Money Act uh, left over that they could put toward this fund. And um, so the winner got town bucks for $500 for the participating stores in town. And they all the stores in town were invited to participate. We also, they also offered the winner a free night stay in the local boutique hotel. So it was great. And how it worked was they had to visit every store that participated and get a stamp in their little uh, raffle book, not raffle book, but contestant book that showed that they had visited every store. And some might say to me, well, visiting every store doesn't improve my business. They're just coming to get their entry filled out. You know what I say to that? Shame on you. If I bring you a customer through your front door, you need to figure out how to help them. I just brought you a warm lead. And in the business world, that's way better than a cold lead. So anyways, um, they would get this filled out and then they'd put their entry, they'd enter their, their filled out entry form at the town office and a drawing would occur where they would pick the winner. What a great idea. I think, uh, I think there were more than one winner too. So that's an idea. Uh, where's Waldo and passport events? Well, you know, I go to Duck, North Carolina every summer and they're famous for their Where Waldo's, Where's Waldo contest. And what they do is they hide Waldo throughout stores in uh, the town of Duck. And again, the contest is for people and kids to find Waldo slightly hidden in, in the store. And if they do, they get some kind of prize. Um, you know, one of the things I read in a report recently is people come to small stores uh, during the holidays because they expect, they expect some kind of giveaways. So it might be a good idea to invest in some, some things that you can actually give away as people visit you and give away as prizes. One of those examples would be, you know, giving someone a, a, a small prize for checking in on Facebook while they're in your store or incentivizing people to do live Facebook videos or Zoom videos when they're shopping in your store and having a great time. So before I go further, I just wanna say the secret sauce this year is figuring out how to take what you did to get people through your door at, in previous holiday seasons and figure out how, they get, how to get them on your website as well. Because again, everyone's predicting a huge online uh, purchasing uh, 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 con uh, consumer this year, 50 to 70% are things that'll be bought online. And, Remember the 70% includes big box online stores and of course the big gorilla in the room, Amazon. Some towns have just uh, come up with gift certificates or town bucks that is subsidized by the town office at 20%. So the consumer buys the gift certificates from the town office for the participating stores in town at a 20% discount 
But when that gift certificate or town buck is used at the store, its full value is is um, you, is given to the store owner. So um, another great way for the town itself to support their merchants and incentivize coopetition. Next slide. Listen, I think that you ought to know as a merchant in your town, what the destination statement is for every main street store that's on and in your town. And a destination statement is what makes them special, what they do different and why you should direct your customers to also visit them. Again, in the spirit of coopetition, we're not afraid to send our customers to our colleagues and neighbors in our town because we see competition as beneficial. It's not a vindictive competitive environment in a small town. It might be between big boxes, but it's not in our small towns. So know what your neighbors do and what they sell and what you could tell your customers about finding things there. And the other critical piece is knowing what your restaurants offer in your town. Because I know this from my experience, retail follows food. Now food's different this year because dine-in has been uh, not decimated, but certainly impacted by COVID and although we're back on track with dining outdoors for in particular, we still have, you know, a lot of carry out only pack and goes and curbside uh, pickup. So even the restaurant business has changed, but, you know, your customers visiting your town want to know the best places to eat and what they have to offer. You might offer um, discounts or dollars off purchases if they have a receipt from a neighboring store or restaurant. And that might be on, on a, you know, in a plexiglass frame on your counter. Hey, have you just visited so-and-so? If you have your receipt, that's good for $10 off or 10% off. So another idea in terms of encouraging coopetition. Smaller locally sponsored events in lieu of canceled larger town events. We all know that some of our signature events for the holidays have been canceled. We all know that some of our Halloween parades have been canceled and that, you know, giving out candy is, is not a big event anymore. So I do know that towns have put together small events and our guest today is from the town of Gordonsville and I know they've been putting on some smaller events that have increased traffic and gotten people into town as a destination. So we'll hear about that in just a minute. Here's another idea. I had this idea last night. There's a, uh, a florist in South Boston, Virginia that offers, she's uh, used to have a flower bar where people would come in and make bouquets right there in her store, but because of COVID, she can't have everybody handling the flowers and spreading the virus possibly. So she's gone to a subscription model where people uh, once a month get a new bouquet or twice a month. And it's a subscription model and subscription models are very popular right now. The one you may know of is Stitch Fix for women and uh, Bespoke for men. And it's where you get a box a month of products from the store based on a survey that you filled out to describe your taste level and your likes and dislikes and all those things. Well, my idea is to send a box from more than one store. So the subscription model becomes, here's product from three of our stores in our town. And then figure out the logistics. One, one store will take the payment, split the payments among the other two, one store will pack the box, make it beautiful, 
uh, put in coupons, put in thank you notes, put in rack cards possibly from all three or the couple of people that are involved. But another idea, laying awake, trying to figure out ways to improve the holiday during COVID. Next slide. So the other thing that I found out is there are towns and counties that have formed bigger alliances among businesses that go beyond one town. So this comes from Orange County and it's uh, some alliances that have been formed in that, in that county. Foothills Partnership won a VTC leverage market grant to develop the brand website and promotion as a luxury brand for our region of travel. It's foothills.com, virginiafoothills.com. So it's, it's a website that talks about the different places to shop, dine, and visit and do in this county. Great idea. The Montpelier, uh, Mont, Montpelier <laughs> sorry, wine trail encompasses wineries from Orange County, Madison, and Spotsylvania. And it's a trail that takes you to, I think, four or five different wineries. It might even be six. So you have this trail that you follow to visit all six, and they are promoting this together. So they are not shying or shunning the other wineries. They're combining their efforts with them to um, incentivize coopetition. And then the inns in Montpelier have partnershiped for, uh, I think, I'm not sure how many is, but it, it might be a dozen B&Bs that work together on their one brand initiative so that they're working together as a B&B &B operation to get people into the counties. So again, great ideas uh, that are out there that are working. Next slide. So without further ado, I want to introduce to someone to you. Her name is Beate Cassiti, and she is a, uh, a business owner in Gordonsville. I believe her business was in Charlottesville for a number of years before she came to Gordonsville. She's an artist and owner and a, a graduate from the Corcoran Gallery of Art and uh, someone that's extremely interested in the value of cooperation for her town of Gordonsville, Virginia. And if you haven't visited, it's picturesque, it's charming, it's unlike uh, uh, any other town I've visited in, in Virginia. And we welcome her aboard and um, Beate, good morning. Good morning. And there you are. And how about just a little bit of background on you? And then I'm going to pepper away some questions for you okay. that I thought of that might help you uh, tell your story about cooperation. Um, I'm an artist that got into framing and I had, um, I've been framing for 30 years and um, I've owned my own business for 10 years and I relocated here to Gordonsville um, about three years ago. Um, it's a tiny little town um, with a beautiful little main street. It is, um, it is owned by a French patron who um, has restored the whole um, street to be sort of nostalgic and romantic and kind of idyllic and kind of as a getaway destination uh, with very unique kind of boutique style, style um, stores over here, so. It is, uh, yeah, it's awesome. But you're running into some issues uh, based on, uh, gosh, you know, the, the famous French restaurant in Gordonsville has gone through some problems and some things and they're currently not open and they used to be the number one destination for the town. This so I know you think. guys are all grappling with that. It's La Rams. Um, what was the name? The name of the restaurant is La Rams. It's, it's Rochambeau now. Yeah. Or it was Rochambeau. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, 
you and I had have known each other for a number of years and we've spoken about the cooperation and you recently asked me for a quote for your newsletter for the town to spread the word. And so what it, why is it important to your business? What, what why is cooperation front and foremost for you? I think especially right now, I think um, it's really important to support each other, to learn from each other, to know what's going on in the area, um, to um, and to grow together. We are a destination here, so we really um, work better um, as a group. Um, no one's going to come to a little tiny place unless um, there's like a day's worth of things to do um, and unless there's something to explore. People right now really enjoy Gordonsville because it's safe, it's small. Um, and all the stores are very careful about um, the number of guests that they allow. Um, and they're very personable. Uh, and so I think you just feel safe here. Um, so for us, especially right now, it's really important to band together and offer people a, a, an experience as like a daycation to get away from the stress that they're feeling everywhere else. So let me ask you a question. You told me recently that some of your stores in Gordonsville are appointment only. So they're not actually open and they're only open for appointments. And one of the things that, that I think is important is a consistency of hours amongst the players in town. Because you said if someone's gonna come to Gordonsville as a destination, they want a day's worth of things to do. You know, in half the town, the stores are closed. That's problematic. So is, uh, go ahead. It is It is a problem. We have travelers that come here. We, we try to advertise. I work with um, Orange County Tourism on some advertising, and we do these postcards and things like that to attract people to Gordonsville. And they come, and the doors are closed, um, or they have signs on them that they should have made an appointment. Um, I think it's fair for store owners to set those rules if they don't feel comfortable or safe. Yes. Um, I don't think it's convenient for, um, for the customer. Um, and I get a lot of complaints. I'm open during the week and um, a lot of people complain about this. Um, so one of the things I recommend that might be a solution to this, you know, I recommend that 30 second video on the home page of your website. Yeah. And it used to be, you know, you know, your elevator speech and your destination statement and those things. And then the second half of the 30 seconds was to tell people what you've done to make your store safe and antiseptic during the COVID crisis. But what about if they put in that video, the fact that you have to make an appointment to shop with them based on their current protocols that they're practicing for safety and I know that nine out of ten people I've heard it's as high as ten out of ten visit stores websites before they ever go there anyway so wouldn't it be a good idea maybe to announce that right on your site so a customer's not disappointed that comes to Gordonsville to find them closed I do think that if you have to go to 10 different sites before you come to, um, to a town um, to make sure that those places are open or to, to research all those different places, um, the, I think the issue of convenience comes in again um, and kind of relaxing and not having to keep a time schedule when you come to a place like this yeah. or, while you're trying to enjoy yourself um, and not going, I have to be here at 11 and there at 12. And, you know, I, I think Convenience, I think, again, is really important, I think, for, for customers. You're right, but Bate, because I just read that report that people survey in October put convenience at the top. Yeah. You know, they want, you know, anytime, any place, anywhere, any way. So I agree with you. And, you know, I'm a big believer in increasing hours during the holiday season. You know, make hay while the sun's shining. If there's any time you're open in the evening, it ought to be from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Um, and we'll see. We'll see. Um, but I also know that you guys have put on some, some, some events in Gordonsville to try to drive some traffic. We, uh, we try to give, um, we try to attract uh, more visitors and we tried to give people something to do while they were here. 
So um, I have joined with two other um, local businesses here and we've formed an LLC so we can legally um, organize these events. And um, we have done, um, these are all small events. They're all outdoor events and, and they're all um, bring a mask, um, you know, social distancing, all of those things. And, and the local police is very nice. They walk around and remind everybody. Yeah. And we put on um, music on the town hall steps and then some of the shops stay open in the evening. And even if they don't have any sales during that time, people do discover them and they will come back and see them again. That's awesome. And then I know a local uh, coffee shop and bakery had a cart for a number of weekends there. And I also have read about the hot dog man that has his cart out there over weekends. And your town hall is right across the street from Main Street or on Main Street across right. from the shop. Right. So th those are all good things. And you do have a destination restaurant to st with Well Hung Vineyard. And you have an awesome barbecue place right there at the yeah, end of town. Barbecue. So I think people are still coming, you know, for the for the food aspect. So um, are there any contests or raffles or anything that stores are doing for the holiday season? Or is it too early to ask that question? We are working on holiday events, including um, a small business Saturday event, probably with music and things like that. We have a cash mob that's going to come to Gordonsville. Um, in November or December um, through one of the local banks, they're going to hand out money to people and then they, are, um, they can go around and spend it at certain locations here in Gordonsville. Um, and we're trying, obviously we're gonna have a Santa somehow, um, probably separated from everybody, but we're figuring all that out. So we're, we're gonna try to attract um, both local and um, traveler traffic. Awesome, awesome. Um, you know, when I spoke to you the other day, I said that I had um, something coming up, an event coming up with Culpepper and Stanton uh, in those towns. And you said they stand out to you as towns that work together in the spirit of cooperation. What makes you feel that way about those two towns? Um, they have a really strong merchant um, cooperation. They just... Um, and they have large events. One of the things that I really loved in Stanton was um, during COVID or, or right after the quarantine, they moved um, indoor dining outside. So they blocked off Main Street um, or Beverly Street, excuse me. And, um, and then in the evenings, they would have all the restaurants outside, I think Friday through Sunday. And you could go shopping and, um, and enjoy dinner outside and it brought traffic to everybody downtown. That's awesome. You know, we've done that in Leesburg where I live and we initially started on Saturday and Sundays and we closed Main Street. So to, it's all becomes walk tra walking traffic only, but all the shops are open and all the restaurants are open and we were going to do it through October. It's been so successful yeah. that it's now Friday, Saturday and Sunday and it's going through November. And I drove by Tuscarora Mill, which is one of our big restaurants in Leesburg, and they have catering tents outside. And guess what? There are um, those indoor, or not indoor, outdoor uh, fire furnaces, the furnaces to keep restaurants warm inside the tent. They're planning on doing that right in through winter. So again, retail follows food. So I'd like to open it up to the whole group. I've invited some people to not necessarily participate, but be, be in the group that tuned in today. Amanda, do we have anybody out there that's willing to share some ideas with us? Mark, I'm going to head through and, and unmuting everyone. So as you're unmuted, if you wanna. Well, that'll help. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, otherwise we start to get um, feedback in the I middle. Know. I didn't want to do that. I so. know, I'm just teasing you. I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so I think everyone is unmuted. If you are not unmuted and you want to be unmuted, put something, you know, just type in the chat window and I will make sure that you get unmuted. So everybody should have their mics open at this point. Diane, were you able to join us? 
she goes. Yeah, I don't, Mark, I don't think Diane Rolls here. She's been such a busy woman lately. Um, but you, you wanted to highlight her example of starting of, she was one of the first food trucks in, in Harrisonburg, right? She evolved into a restaurant in downtown Dayton. Then she built catering operations. And with COVID, you know, she- Tell them about the, of, isn't it the Southern Market? Yeah, with the COVID, she faced a lot of challenges, uh, but went back to one of her original concepts was meals, um, providing family meals, uh, something that she used to do out of her food truck. And in her catering kitchen in the town of Bridgewater next to Dayton, she had some space and it just did the idea blossomed on how she could share her workspace and reconfigure her kitchen to allow for a grab and go uh, food uh, market and invited other uh, um, merchants to be a part of that space and to contribute and have opportunities to sell their retail food items. I just thought that was just a magnificent idea. And I think the, 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 the catch, not the catch, but what's really cool is they don't have to pay to be in the market. All they have to do is work a day a week covering the cash register in the store. So it's almost uh, like an incubator for, for businesses to test out whether people have an appetite for their, their product with grab and go great great example of coopetition it's true i'm thinking about how can i put together christmas baskets you know it's a one-stop shop right i can also get food for my family that night but um pick up some popcorn now tisha is making um specialty drinks and uh there's a provider of um fresh uh um, produce and there's canned foods and, and all kinds of things. Um, um, maybe Don's on the line too. He's been working with that, uh, that group. But that, that is a, a perfect example of um, people that can compete in some areas, but now they're also collaborating. And I think that is the story of the Shenandoah Valley. In, in tourism development and destination marketing, the folks on the attractions, the restaurants, the hoteliers, we have a, a reputation, a long history of, yes, we're competing for that same customer, but we collaborate to build this area as a destination, right? We all chip in for the marketing because we know that that pie gets bigger, right? That that, 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 that grows and that's good for all. The town does better, the county does better, all the individual businesses do better. 